Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rendezvous. We are so glad to see you guys. Let's stand up on our feet and let's start to praise our Jesus. Come on.
Sing me because my mind can comprehend. And there is beauty what I can't understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you.
moment when we're singing this song I love this song because it's a reminder it's a declaration that the world says enough what's not possible but with our God things may seem impossible but he can do all things and so maybe we find ourselves in a desperate situation maybe we find ourselves in the most difficult place we've ever been in our lives that is the perfect scenario for God to work a miracle and so we don't have to be discouraged, but we can declare over our lives that it's just too good not to believe. That he's done things in the past and he can do them again. That we stand firm in who he is every single day, no matter what our circumstances, he remains the same. And so we're going to lift our hands up right now and we're just going to ask God to do what he does, to be faithful, to be good, to be true, but to just do something new in us. God, we thank you that we get to be here tonight. Whether we're watching online or we're in the room, we don't want to take this moment for granted, but we just want to take this moment, pause and recognize who you are, that you are a good, good father, that you are a God that provides, that you are a God who empathizes with us, that you are a God who is near and dear to our hearts in every situation. And so God, tonight, do something new in us. Renew our hearts, renew our minds, renew our faith to know that we serve a God who still performs miracles today. And so we come to you, we surrender to you, and we give the rest of this service to you. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen, amen, amen. Come on, God is so, so good. We're so excited that you are here. Welcome to The Rendezvous. My name is Crystal, and we're going to take these next 30 seconds, whether you're online or in the room, and we're going to say hello to someone. Maybe you want to wave from across the room or walk over, whatever you feel comfortable with, but let's take these next 30 seconds to chat. What's up, Rendezvous? Come on, you made it to the best night of the week. It's Tuesday. Whether you're watching online or in the room, we are excited that you are here. Like I said, my name is Crystal, and this is... Brian, and it's great to see you guys. You guys looking amazing tonight, man. Give a round of applause for that. Woo! Now, there's a special set of guests that we have here, Crystal, and yep. that is our VIP guests. If you don't know what that is, it's basically your first time. So we just want to shout you out. There should be a connect card on your seat. All you got to do is just fill that out and you can get right plugged in with us. Absolutely. And we have things going on here at the Rendezvous and at Trinity Church. And something that's happening on August 29th is a worship night. Now, it's not our concert. However, they are having the concert here. So we get a special price for the tickets. And so Brian and Katie Torwalt are hosting a, a concert worship night here with Naomi Rain from Maverick City. And so you can purchase your ticket today after service in the lobby for a special worship night. Yes, that is very good. And also another announcement that we have is our team rally. Yeah. Now, typically our team rally, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a little worship session that we have. We all come gather together before the rendezvous starts. Just kind of a way to ease up, yeah. you know, the night. So if you are in this room, you are invited. It is typically at Tuesday 
at 7 p.m. before the rendezvous starts. Yes, and something we also have every Tuesday, which Brian has been my favorite, is after service, we've been hanging out and having some kind of food. And tonight, we're having ice cream bars. So we invite you, stick around, hang out with us, meet someone new, or maybe just take a few minutes and talk to someone that you haven't talked to in a while. But we invite you to hang out with us after service tonight. Chris, I've been having a lot of ice cream lately. But <laughs> as we go into this time of worshiping through our giving, yeah. there are a few ways that we love to give here. There's an envelope on your seat, and you can just put your offering in there if you choose. Or we have a Trinity app that we used to also give. Now, we normally give through that. It's the best and safest way to give. All you got to do is text Trinity Miami to 77977. And Crystal, would you do the honor of giving us our offering message yes, tonight? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I love this time of giving because generosity truly is our privilege here at the Rendezvous. And we don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. We don't just move past it. But we encourage one another in our giving because we know that generosity can be our privilege because God gave to us first. And I love this scripture in Proverbs 11:24 where it says one person gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds but comes to poverty. And I think sometimes we can think that we take best care of our own things, so we keep it. Maybe you have siblings or family members that you've let them borrow something and they didn't return it back the same way you gave it to them. But that's not how giving works with God. He's given to us so that we can give freely. And this scripture reminds us that when we give freely, when we open our hands to what God has for us, we gain even more. It may not be how we think it might look like, but it's always better than what we plan for. And so when we open our hands and we give generously what's already God's, that tithe, that 10%, but maybe we go above and beyond and give an offering. We know that he's going to bless it and he's going to reach people. He's going to reach communities farther. It, it, it will go farther than it ever can in our own hands. And so give today confidently, cheerfully, knowing that God will not only meet your needs, but the, he will meet the needs of others as well. So whatever you're giving, maybe you're giving through envelope or your phone, I encourage you to just raise it up in faith and knowing that God is going to do what only he can do and multiply and bless others. God, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you that we get to give, that generosity is our privilege. And we can say that because you gave to us first. And so I pray for every giver tonight, online or in the room, that you would bless them, meet their needs, Lord. But God, that you would multiply this offering and that it would reach farther than it ever could in our own hands. So we thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. And in Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. 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 Well, let's get up on our feet and worship together.
that tonight. God's love is a love like no other. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise in this room? Can we give it up for him? Man, he's good. Wait, I'm glad you're here with us tonight at the rendezvous. My name is DJ, and I'm just believing it's going to be a great night. We're at the best night of the week. It's Tuesday. Why? Because we're here. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's not even promised, but we're here on a Tuesday night. So let's make the best of it, yeah? Let's have a good time together. Maybe even eat some ice cream. And you know, when you eat, uh, when you eat food at church, there's no calories or sugar. It's crazy. But uh, it's just kind of how it works when you're in the house of God. Come on, let's go. No, but glad you're here. Uh, before we get started, how about before you take your seat, you look to the person next to you and you say, man, it's so great to see you tonight. Even if you don't know him, just tell him. Just say, yo, it's so good to see you tonight. The yo is optional. You don't have to say yo. But man, how are we feeling? You guys feeling good? Man. It's crazy. It's been like a, a wild, like, past few weeks. Did you know the Olympics just ended yesterday? You guys know about that? Some people are like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, what even happened? The Olympics? What is that? Yeah, they call it the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Even though it's 2021, they want to keep the branding. But yeah, that's just, that ended yesterday. Uh, United States, we got the most medals and the most gold. So that's pretty good. Um, well, I mean... We're in the United States, so that's kind of what we're going for, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, that was incredible. Um, but yeah, it's been a really great week and just so glad that you're with us tonight. Um, if you've never been here before, uh, my name is DJ, me and my wife, we lead the rendezvous um, each and every week. Uh, this is for um, young adults uh, mainly, but we just are, are so thankful to be with you. We really believe um, in youth and we really believe in young adults because we really believe that you are the next generation, that you're the people that are going to change the world. And so the fact that God's given us this opportunity uh, to help lead you into that calling that God has for your life, uh, we're just so honored to do that on a week-to-week -week basis, because we really do believe in you. We believe that God's given you unique gifts, unique talents, and even if you're in the season right now, you're trying to figure out what you need to do. You know, hey, what's my purpose? What's my calling? What, what, what is God having me doing? And I just want to encourage you that it's bigger than you think. And that's not to give you pressure. That's to let you know that as you follow God, He begins to reveal those things to you. But we're here to help you along in that journey. We really are. And so we're just thankful uh, to be a part of it. But if you've been here the past few weeks, you know that we've been going through this series. We're in summer at the rendezvous. I'm having a good time even after the services. But we've really been going through some of the biggest stories in the Bible. If you've grown up in church for any period of time, you've most likely heard of some of these stories. We've talked about um, the Good Samaritan would be an example. Uh, we've talked about just like a, a lot of different stories of, of the Bible. And so maybe you're new to this whole thing. So maybe it's not something that you've heard before, but just know that these are kind of maybe bigger or more well-known stories. So tonight we're going to talk from the story of Joseph. And I don't know if you were a kid like me in, in Sunday school, but you had these like little beginner Bibles. And the beginner Bibles are nice because they have a bunch of pictures in it. And uh, you don't have to read as much. Sometimes with the words, it's just a lot, you know. And uh, it was called Joseph and the Coat of Many Colors. You know, that's how I had growing up. But uh, if you're familiar with that story, it's awesome. If you're not, it's totally cool as well. But we're just going to read a quick verse uh, from Genesis chapter 37. Uh, Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. There are 66 books, Old and the New Testament. And we're going to be reading from the Old Testament. And it is the first book of the Bible. The difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is simply Jesus is in the New Testament, and this and Old Testament is before Jesus. So this is pre-Jesus, and uh, this is after the creation of the world, Adam and Eve and all that. And this is Genesis chapter 37. We're going to read one verse. I'm going to say the title, and we're going to get into it. Are you ready? So here it is in Genesis 37, verse 5. It said, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers, they hated him all the more. Not everyone's going to like it when you share your dream with them. Not everyone's going to be on board. But the title of my message tonight is, Don't Follow Your Dreams. Don't Follow Your Dreams. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this night. Would you speak through me? Would we learn something about you to help us transform into the change that you've called us to be? Would you be with us this night? In your name we pray. We all said, and we all said, Come on, can you give Jesus one more shout of praise in this place, in this room? I like when you talk, you know what I'm saying? If so, if you, every time you want to shout, you want to say amen, you want to say preach it, white boy, whatever you want to do, I want to hear it because it helps me know instead of just some, maybe some blank faces. But 
Um, so glad that you are here tonight, and I am ready. But do you remember when you were a kid what you wanted to be when you grew up? Do you remember that? Raise a hand. Do you guys remember what you wanted to be when you grew up? Now, it's crazy. Um, a f- uh, this is probably about a year ago. Um, I saw this notification in my email. You're like, DJ, email? Who uses that anymore, you know? And not only that, I'm going to get a little bit more embarrassed, okay? But that's okay. I'm willing. I'm willing to go for it. Um, but the notification on my email was from Facebook. Now, if you don't know what Facebook is, um, it's this app. If you take Twitter and Instagram and combine it, but it's unlimited words, and it tells you when people's birthdays are. That's basically what Facebook is, okay? So I don't use it anymore, and I, but I didn't, like, delete it. I just uh, kind of stopped the notifications on my phone, and so I looked on my email, and I saw that someone had tagged me in a video, okay? So I was like, what? And the person that had tagged the video was someone I knew in, like, junior high. So this is, like, kind of weird, like, in middle school. And so I go to look at it, and this was... I, I vaguely remember, now obviously it's more vivid because I was able to watch it, but they were able to find a video of my eighth grade class, this video that they showed during our eighth grade graduation. And this video had every individual from our class share about uh, the major they wanted to have when they were older and then the profession they wanted to go into. So how about we play a clip from that, right? No, I'm just kidding. I don't have it. I don't have it. No, no, no. <laughs> Even if I found it, I wouldn't have told you, okay? So but we're just going to keep that here. So now I can just tell you what it said. So it could have been anything, you know what I'm saying? No, but, uh, you know, they're going through all these um, different majors and things that people wanted to be. And so throughout my class, there was different professions. I mean, engineers, uh, teachers, uh, doctors, all these different types of things and very noble things. You you had the jokester who wanted to be like a custodian. You know what I'm saying? Like there was those kids in your eighth grade class. Um, But it got to me and I was like, man, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Well, what, I, what I said when I was in eighth grade and found out I wanted to be a professional basketball player. I was like, I want to. And I said it with such confidence. I was bold because I was at like my eighth grade private school, you know, and I was the star of the team, you know, with our school with, you know, 105 people that are in, our, you know what I'm saying? All these like really tiny schools. And so I thought maybe I could be a professional basketball player that I could dominate. Uh, needless to say, I'm a pastor. And I have an economics degree. It turns out when you're 6'2 and uh, have no dribbling skills at all and you can't really jump, it's very hard for you to reach the NBA. And so that's why I decided to take my talents to South Beach and uh, be a pastor. Um, I know you thought that was a other thing. But anyways, um, needless to say, I'm doing something a lot different than what I originally dreamed that I was going to do. And so what I found is that dreams don't always come true. Now, there are stories of maybe people in your life or stories that you've heard, um, you know, maybe from the news or on Instagram of people who have done exactly what they set out to do. I remember when I was seven years old and I felt like my mom did this, so I was going to do the exact same thing, and now I'm doing it myself. And they've had that dream, and, and then they do exactly what they were told to do. But for most of us, a lot of us have had a dream, and we've either given up on that dream, or that dream hasn't happened yet. And even if you're still on that journey, this past year and a half hasn't made our dreams any easier. Because this past year and a half has, has been unprecedented for all of us, and I don't need to necessarily go into it, we've heard a lot, but... I don't know about you, but I thought that we were kind of out of the woods, you know, like, okay, COVID-19 is chilling, masks are now optional when I go into Target, like we're making some moves, and then this Delta comes out of nowhere, and I'm like, I've never even heard of Delta. I mean, I've heard of the airline, but they're really nice, and they took good care of me, you know what I'm saying? But you're talking about a Delta variant of, is it still COVID-19? Do you call it Delta? I'm not 100% sure, but all I know is that we're still in this phase of pandemic. And there could be things in our lives that maybe we wanted to do, but there's so many excuses that we see in our world. Oh yeah, but you know, COVID, you know. It's like, I was gonna brush my teeth yesterday, but you know, COVID. I'm like, dude, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things you could do that had nothing to do with COVID, but that has become an excuse for a lot of us, but also a genuine hindrance to what we want to do. 
or maybe we feel like a dream that we want to fulfill. And so I'm here to tell you that in light of everything going on, just give up on your dreams, okay? Don't follow them. Because every time you follow your dreams, they will let you down. And I promise I'm here to encourage you, okay? But there, there's so many times when we've had expectations for where we wanted to be, even at this point in your life. If you were to look back maybe 10 or 15 years, the spot where you felt like you were supposed to be right now hasn't happened yet. And you haven't gotten there. And I just heard uh, uh, this past week, um, I heard a story of a teenager who actually was going through a phase of anxiety because he felt like he was behind. Like he was supposed to know what he wanted to do in the future. Just like when you're graduating high school or graduating college, you have these, all these people around you. They feel like they know what to do, but you're just kind of sitting here like, I don't exactly know what I'm supposed to do. So this is kind of the phase where he was in in life. So I want to tell you, don't follow your dreams. It's going to stress you out. It's going to wear you out. And uh, I think we do that, and I think we, we've heard this phrase called, said, like, follow your dreams. You know, hey, follow your dreams. Follow your heart. You do you. Be your truth. Do what you feel. You can do it when the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17.9. That if we're in this phase of just doing exactly what we feel like we're supposed to do or what we feel like we've had a dream in our head of what we're supposed to do, it's very difficult. And we just read a verse from Genesis 37. That's the beginning of this journey that this character Joseph is on. And Joseph, um, if you have read the story of Joseph, you know this dude has a crazy life. And if you've ever heard a sermon about this guy, Joseph, you may have heard this phrase, from the pit to the palace. Man, from the pit to the palace, God has a plan for your life. No matter where you are, God's going to take you from where you are to, to accomplish the dreams that he's given you. But it was true. Like, he was in a pit, then he was in a couple prisons, and he ended up second in command to Pharaoh in Egypt. But what's interesting is though it starts with a dream, he tells his brother, uh, he tells his brothers, but the dream beyond that was not mentioned at all in the rest of Joseph's story. Like, throughout all of Joseph's story, you never heard of his dream again. It never said, follow your dreams. It never said, oh, and Joseph remembered what God had given him, the dream had given him. All the Bible says when it comes to consistent things throughout his life, is that the Lord was with Joseph. Whether he was in the prison, he was in the pit, he was at Potiphar's house and serving to one of the highest officials in Egypt, the Lord was with Joseph. Because Joseph understood that, he, that, that, that more than just his dream, he wanted God to be with him. Because he could have every dream in his life accomplished here on earth, but without God, that he doesn't have anything, that he would trade every dream that he could possibly have, all the money in the world, all the relationships, and if he just had Jesus, everything would be okay. Everything would be okay. So I want to encourage you tonight, don't follow your dreams, follow Jesus, and your dreams will follow you. Don't follow your dreams, follow Jesus, and the, and, and the dreams will follow you. But the reason we want to follow our dreams is because we want to stand out, that we want to make a difference in this world, and we want ourselves to be different. I don't think any of us in this room would say, I just really want to thrive throughout life. I want to live my life. My dream is that I pay every bill that I have. And I just really feel like if I, if I filled up my gas tank before it hit E, that would be great. If I didn't live check to check, man, my, my life would be satisfied. No, none of us would say that. We all have a dream and a vision because we have this passion uh, for our lives that we want to see more change. And Joseph himself, he was different. We want to be different with our dreams, but Joseph himself was different. He was the son of this guy named Jacob 
at the time, he had several brothers, and they all had the same dad, but Joseph had a different mom than the rest of his brothers did. And his brothers were, were um, sons to a woman named Leah, and he was the son of someone named Rachel. Now, Leah and Rachel, they were sisters, and Jacob, his dad, liked Rachel the best. Okay, he was not shy about it. He had worked for their dad for seven years in order to get Rachel because she's the pretty one. She's the good looking one. I want to marry her. Well, his dad gave the, the dad gave him Leah, and then he's like, You gotta work seven more years to get Rachel. He's like, What? So he did it. He has both Leah and Rachel. So when the dad, so the dad really liked, he really liked Rachel. This is the his favorite wife. And I just want to remind Crystal that you are my favorite wife. Okay. You're my favorite wife. Just want to clarify that. But he gave him a son, and his dad, Jacob, thought that, that, J- that Joseph uh, was extra special, and he treated him like it. And I don't know if you've read the story at all, but his dad got him this Gucci coat, and uh, it was really sweet. He, he was repping it, and he was rocking it. And, like, no matter where he went, he repped this Gucci coat, like, really hard. You know, he didn't, he, he didn't want anyone to shy away, okay? So Joseph went everywhere, everywhere he went. And he'd walk up to his other brothers, who they all know that he's the favorite, okay? I don't know if you're the favorite child in your family, but I can imagine it's a burden if you are the favorite child, okay? And if you're not, I'm praying for you. He would go up to his brothers, who, by the way, are all older than him and less favorite. He says, hey, do you like my coat? Hey, check this out. My dad gave me this sweet jacket. And they were like, no, actually, we hate you. And we hate your coat. And uh, we don't want you around here because that, that jacket, not only is it a little too much, but you're different, okay? We have, want nothing to do with you, Joseph. And what's interesting is we want to separate ourselves in the world from being different. Yes, you want to make different in a change, but when it comes to our culture, we don't. Stephen Furtick says it like this. People accept what is the same, but they respect what is different. They respect what is different often We will take qualities in our life that make us different and we minimize them so that we can conform to look like culture. So even as we pursue our dreams, we want to make sure that we look like everyone around us. But the reality is with Joseph is he wore this coat with pride wherever he went because it made him different and he was proud of it. He had favor from his father. And if you are a follower of Jesus, 1 Peter 2, 9 says you are a chosen people. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You are different. You are different. You are special if you follow Jesus. That there's something about following him that makes you more like Jesus. And Jesus was different. He was so different, it got him crucified. So my question is for you, is are you proud of your coat? Are you proud of your coat that God has given you? Because I know that God has made me different. Because he's made me in his own image. He knows me better than anyone else. That he helps me fulfill my calling, what I have inside me. He gives me purpose that's bigger than myself. He carries me through the brightest of days and the darkest of nights. He will never leave me or forsake me. I am a child of God. But some of you are more proud of the dream you pursue than the God you serve. That when someone asks you about what you do, you're really happy to tell them that you work at this and you're pursuing this and my goal is to do this. But when it comes to being a follower of Jesus, you really want to hide and shy away because ah, I don't know if I'm proud of that part. But Joseph, but Joseph didn't care. He wore his coat with pride. The fact that it distinguished him made him excited. Because you think you need courage to follow your dreams. You need courage to follow Jesus. You need courage to know that you're different. You need courage to know that you're going to act different, that you're going to think different, that when you follow him and take on the new identity that he's given you, you might eat different, you'll text different, you'll party different. Everything about you changes when you follow Jesus. Everything. And the moment that we decide to conform is when we lose the uniqueness that God has given us. Jesus makes you different, not your dream. 
Jesus makes you different, not your dream. Joseph had the courage to be different. Do you have the courage to be different? Now, Joseph was different. Joseph was really different because it said the Lord was with Joseph. And you know what's crazy about the story of Joseph is that Joseph never asked for a dream. Joseph never asked for the dream that he was given. That as God, he, he gets this dream, and as we read from verse 5, he told his brothers, and they hated him for it. But he never asked for the dream. And sometimes we get our own dream in our head of the goal that we have for our life. And then we feel like God is obligated to help us follow our dreams when we feel like they're big enough. And anyone who comes along our path, that if they disagree, that they're just a hater. The man, I want to be a producer, but man, if anyone comes in my way or anything stops me, man, they're just haters, man. They just don't see me. Man, they just don't know how cool I am. Man, I'm going to be a producer, man. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to be a singer. I want to be a singer. I want to be a star. I want to have a microphone. I want to be really cool. But some of us think that, that people are just haters when your mom just thinks you're a bad singer. She's just trying to be... She's just trying to be honest with you. She's just trying to tell you straight up, that's not your calling, bro. She's not a hater. She loves you, okay? Now, Jesus, he didn't make a vision board, or, or Joseph, he didn't make a vision board. He didn't write out a 10-year plan. He didn't set goals for all of his life or anything like that. Not that those things are bad. We just can't associate our dreams with God's dreams. Some of us in this room, those things have aligned 100%, but for a lot of us who are struggling with the direction that God is taking us, sometimes those things uh, can hinder us, and in fact, that dream can become a distraction. Dreams can become a distraction. Now, I, li I love Joseph, and, and if you've read the story of Joseph, you know, this is like one of the most, like, the dudes with like the most integrity, a lot of dudes in the, the Bible really screwed up and messed up. Joseph didn't. He was a good guy. However, there were some questionable moves that maybe if I were in his position, probably wouldn't have done, okay? After he hears his dream, now, if you're Joseph, unless you're completely naive, you know that your brothers don't like you, okay? At this point, he's got to be at least in his late teens, e even if he's in his mid-teens. You know if your brother or sister's got something towards you. You know what I'm saying? He gets this dream of his brothers. And he says, hey, guys, do you want to hear my dream? And they're like, no, we, we hate your dreams. We hate you. I, I don't want to hear anything about it. Okay, cool. So let me tell you what happened. So we were, we were binding these sheaves of grain. And it was crazy because I binded sheaves and you binded sheaves. And if you don't know what sheaves are, that's okay. So I bind a sheaf, and you bound a sheaf. And the thing is, your sheaves bow down to my sheaf. Isn't that crazy? No, honestly, Joseph, I would rather just shut up. I don't want to hear. Oh, do you want to hear another one? Oh, oh, no? Okay, cool. So let me tell you about this other one. So there's the sun and these moon and these stars. They hated the dream. They, had not, they didn't want to hear about it. They didn't want to hear what was going on in his life. It's like, Joseph, come on, man. Just be smart for like five seconds. I mean, they hated that dream so much, they threw him into a pit. And if it weren't for his oldest brother, Reuben, he would be dead in the pit. I mean, he ended up just going in, he, thrown into slavery because they, they spared his life. But he would have been thrown in the pit all because he shared this dream with these dudes who just didn't like him. He didn't like him. But understand that even though he chose to tell his brothers about a dream too early. Some of us are talking about our dreams too early with other people. Some dreams God's given you, you got to keep for yourself until something comes to fruition. Because sometimes we're really good at talking about our dreams, but not very good at doing our dreams, okay? So we got to make sure. But he told this too early. He ends up getting thrown in a pit, but he was still used by God to fulfill the dream that God had given him. So I want to encourage you, even if you felt like God has given you a dream, 
and you feel like there's a journey that God's taking you and you feel like I'm in the wrong spot, I've messed up, I've screwed up, don't think that God can't use what you've gone through for his glory and for his plan. The Bible says that he works all things together for the good of those who love God. So you can't, there's no place that you can mess up far enough, that you can hurt people far enough, that you can screw up far enough for God to not still use you. God can use you. God can use you. So he can still use you. Now, for me, like, sometimes dreams can look different for every single person. And so for me, like, I never dreamed about being a dad, okay? I talked about this crystal earlier. If you didn't know, she's pregnant. Just want you guys to know. Yeah. Eight months. Next month we're having a baby. It's crazy. But for me, it was crazy. I never, like... I never had this idea of having a kid, okay? But it's crazy. I talked with Crystal, and she always dreamed of being a mom, you know? And so in this process of, like, I didn't dream this, but as I get closer, as I get closer to this reality, the more I am excited about it. Because now I'm just like, yo, the, the baby's got to come today. Like, I'm ready to be a dad. Listen, I've heard all the junk. You know, my perception of being a dad prior was number one, people already told me, DJ, you're not going to get any sleep. You're going to have all the stinky diapers, like all that kind of stuff. And, you know, enough people have told me that, that if I come in thinking that this is a surprise, that's on me at this point, okay? So I'm ready for that. But to me, like before, I had like dreamt about like, hey, what it would be like to get married and, you know, what it would be like to have like my job in ministry or whatever that was. But I never dreamed about being a dad. But it's crazy that the closer that the day is approaching – the more my desire is for the dream of having a kid. Like, it's crazy. As you begin to follow God and do the duties that he's given you, your dreams and desires will line up with what God has given you. Does that make sense? So God's going to place you in different positions that's going to help you align with the dream that God has given you. So even though... You think that right now at Wendy's that your job is not important and you want to quit right now? Just know this could be God preparing you for something bigger. Let me prove it to you. Joseph was in a prison. Has Joseph done anything wrong? No. He, his brothers were just mad at him. He is thrown into slavery, gets thrown into prison. He then gets out of the prison, part of his house, then accused of something again that he does not do, and then gets thrown into a pit again. That between Joseph getting the dream and his dream actually being fulfilled would be 10 years. So for you to think that the dream that God's given you now in this place in your life, now it's like this is not the path that it was supposed to be. I, mean, I, was, supposed to be, I was supposed to be an engineer by now. I was supposed to be, I know this is the path, this is the plan, this is what God had for me. But the thing is, now you're, you're stuck at Wendy's, or you feel like you're stuck at Wendy's, or you're stuck at McDonald's. By the way, love both of those places when you're in a hurry, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, like, you got to understand that you can't just keep jumping from place to place when every season of your life God's trying to mold you and to shape you and the person he's called you to be. That Joseph didn't know that it was in these different places where God was leading him to where he called him to be. That God was leading him. But sometimes our dreams can distract us from the God dream. Because if we do get to that place where we feel like this is the exact path, this is the exact place, we'll jump from place to place and we'll realize that we've missed it. Because it's, it's, we were talking about being different, okay? Okay. You're saying, my job's not important. It's not significant enough. It's not making as big of a difference as I thought it was going to make. But it's not about what you do. It's not about what you do. Your dreams are not as much about what you do as who you are. 
the values that you carry, the man or the woman of God that God has created you to be, that Joseph was more concerned about who he was before God than he ever was before who he was before man. It's the substance of what makes you, you. Who are you? As you're working at Walmart, not what you do, who are you? How do you treat people? Do you love them? How is your patience? How is your self-control? How is your kindness and your love? These are the kinds of things that God wants to develop in us. And sometimes we can't get to the thing that God has for us until we develop these things inside of us. But don't let your dream distract you from what God has for you. If you're in a place right now, it's exactly where you're supposed to be. Maybe not for your whole life, but right now is where you're supposed to be. Because when you uh, realize this last thing is that your dreams are not for you. Skipping ahead towards the end of the story, chapter 42, verse 6, it says, Now Joseph was the governor of the land and the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Now, Joseph's dream would eventually become a reality. Dreams do come true. Some do, yeah. But not only would his dream be completely different than the dream that, not only would the reality become completely different than the dream that he had, but it would impact the entire nation of Israel. Because what happened was, is not only was he able to save his family, he was also able to convince Pharaoh to allow his entire family and extended family have some of the best lands in all of Egypt and would be a part of this bigger story of God leading them to the promised land. So even though it was sheaves of grain bowing down to his, in reality, it was Joseph standing there and his 11 brothers bowing down before him. If you don't know the story, his brothers, they were in Israel and they needed food. They were going through a drought and Joseph had this vision before that there was going to be seven years of, of fruitfulness and then seven years of drought. So what he did was he gathered all these supplies and what happened during the seven years of drought is Egypt became the place where nations from all around would come to purchase food from them, including his family who came and would bow down to him and would end up saving all of Israel. Now eventually it was the promised land. They would raise up and then Moses comes let my people go all that kind of stuff but what's interesting about this story is I I never became a professional basketball player I don't know if you know that maybe thought you recognized me I promise you it wasn't now I never thought that I was the basketball player that I was supposed to be but what's interesting is I, I still like like to play basketball and uh the other day maybe like Maybe like two or three months ago, I saw some guys on the court. I didn't recognize them. And I decided I want to go out and just play with them. Like, hey, let's just, you know, play some three on three, four on four, whatever it was. And uh, as I got to know these guys through playing basketball, I had invited them to church. Hey, you should come on Sunday. Like, enjoy the time. And so they ended up coming. And the preacher that day gives an altar call. And at the very end, all six guys stood up to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Now, for me, that dream looked a lot different. I'm not a professional basketball player. Doesn't mean I'll never play basketball. But God maybe is going to give you a dream and it's going to look different. But can I tell you that eternal souls are so much important than my own dream and God giving me more money and more fame and and. All, you know, more women, all this kind of stuff. That God using me to impact peoples whose lives were going one direction and now completely turned in a different one is so much more significant than just you accomplishing what you want to accomplish for you and your family. Because the goal is to follow Jesus. It's the, and the dream will follow you. 
it, it'll come alongside of you. It, it'll eventually get there. But you know who else had a dream that impacted a lot of people was Mary and Joseph. I don't know if you remember the story, but in the Gospels, it described that Mary and Joseph were to be married. Finds out that Mary's pregnant. Joseph leaves her and he's like, yo, what are you doing? Did you cheat on me? But what happened was an angel went to visit Mary and Joseph and told them. They came to him almost like a dream or a vision and said, listen, inside of you right now is the son of God. And I need you to, I said, Joseph, I need you to help her because this is going to, this is going to make a huge difference for all of humanity. And for them, you can't imagine that they would know exactly what that would even entail. What does that mean? Okay, I'm the son of God right now in my womb. Like, there was no way that she would have thought that she would have been worthy enough of this dream or this calling on her life. And eventually she would bear the son of God who would die for all of our sins. He would live a perfect life and become the perfect sacrificial lamb for every single human. And the reason and their obedience and Jesus' death and resurrection is why I stand here today talking is because of what happened over 2,000 years ago. So I want to encourage you today that maybe God's given you a dream. And I, I want to let you know that if it was your dream and you had a plan and you thought of it, it's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. I'm saying there's something that God's given you a natural passion for and desire for that maybe you thought was impossible. So you kind of put it off to the side. That's what God's calling you to. And the path is going to look a lot different. I want to let you know that God is with you. And if you negate all of that and just pursue exactly what you want is when you're going to find yourself in that place of anxiety, just like that teen was. Oh, man, I feel like I, I got to catch up. I got, I got to work harder. I got to make sure that I, I, got, I got to know all the answers. That's not what God's called us to. He's saying wherever you're at right now is part of the path where I want to take you for your future. So stop following your dreams. Follow Jesus and your dreams will follow you. So you want to just bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Maybe you're in this room and you're kind of at a place where, you know, you're just kind of confused about your next step in, in your life. Maybe you, uh, you've had some dreams that maybe they've worked out, maybe they haven't, maybe you're on the path right now. But what you need to, what maybe you have listened to this message tonight, you're like, I just got to realign myself with Jesus. And I got to say, God, I don't want my plan I want your plan. And I need forgiveness for the path that I've chosen for myself. And it's, I know it's not of you. There's some things I've done that I've messed up. And God, I want to give that path to you. And I want to continue to walk in what you have for me because I know I've messed up. Even when Joseph messed up at the very beginning, that actually was key and to everything happening for him. So if that's you and you say, you know, DJ, tonight, I just need forgiveness from God and I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna get back on the path that he's called me to. If, if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand on the count of three. Um, one, this is just between uh, you and God. There's no need to, to look around. Two, this is everything about Jesus. Yes, we do it together, but it's really a personal decision. So if you feel something in your heart, maybe there is something stirring, just know that that's you. Three, would you just raise your hand? Would you raise your hand all over this place? I see your hand, see your hand, I see your hand. I see your hand in the back. You can put them down as they, as they go up. I'm gonna give you five more seconds. Maybe if that's you today, I'm gonna get back on track with Jesus. Five, four, three, I see your hand, two, one. Would everyone just stand up on their feet with me just for a moment? Now, wherever we are on this journey, maybe you uh, are making this decision right now for the very first time. But maybe you're in this place and you're like, hey, yo, I'm doing it. I'm going strong. Well, I just want to encourage you to keep going, that you're doing it, that don't give up. It might look like there's an end of the road, but if you're following Jesus, everything's going to be okay, all right? So I'm going to do is we're, uh, I'm, I'm going to want you to repeat this prayer after me. And so there's going to be some people who are make, maybe making this decision for the very first time to follow Jesus and to get back on track. And so what I want us to do is everyone to repeat this prayer after me so that people don't feel um, alone in their decisions. Does that make sense? So would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, dear Jesus, I've sinned. I'm not proud of it, but I admit it. Tonight, Jesus, I lay my sin down. Take it, I pray. I don't want it anymore. I reach to heaven to receive your forgiveness, to take the place of my sin. And I ask that you accept me into your wonderful family. Tonight, Jesus, I give my life completely to you. I'm yours, Lord. 
God, I just pray for every person in this room who's making that decision, not only for the very first time, but maybe they're just deciding, God, I want to get back on track with you. I'm done following my plan and my will and my way, but God, your will be done in my life. God, I give my life to you. I know you want to use me in a powerful way. God, I don't know what that looks like yet. I'm kind of nervous about it, but Lord, I'm taking this day and I'm giving it to you. I'm giving this night to you. I'm giving this week to you. God, whatever you have for me tonight, let's just take a moment. Give God the praise and the glory. We're going to sing this song together, and would you sing it with everything that you have? Give him everything. Come on. Now I can see your love is better than all the others that I've seen. And I'm breathing deep of all your goodness. Your For every person who maybe made that decision for the very first time tonight, uh, I'm really excited. Um, if you made that decision, maybe you're like, uh, I've never done this before, and I just need a little bit of help on my journey. There's a connect card on your seat, and uh, you can fill that out. Um, and um, on it, it'll say, you can check off the box, like, made a first time decision, rededicated my life. If you can, take that to um, the connect tent out in the lobby as we're eating ice cream, maybe grab a bar and turn that in. Um, we would love to connect with you because we understand that following Jesus is not just a one-time decision. It's a lifelong journey, and it's not an easy journey, but we are here. We exist at the rendezvous to help you on that journey because um, we love you, and we're thankful for you, and life is so much done. It's done way better uh, in community and people that love you than it is doing it all by yourself. And so just know that we're for you. We love you. We're thankful for you. We're glad you're here. We love you so much. We got you some ice cream bars, okay? filling our spirits, you know, raising our hands, and then we're filling our stomachs too. I mean, praise God. That's, a, that's why I came. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I love you guys, but I'm here for the ice cream. No, I'm just kidding. But hey, just uh, remember, yeah, hang out with us after just for a little bit. It's going to be a great time. If it's your first time, or have any questions, uh, talk to us. We love to, we got a lot of great people here on team. Uh, we love to just kind of help you and, and love you along the way in the process. So what you do is just lift up your hands. I'm going to bless you before we leave. God, I thank you so much for the most wonderful people in the whole wide world, the rendezvous at Trinity Church. I pray you bless your people when they rise up, when they lie down, when they go out and they come in, bless them in their labor and in their leisure. Surround them with your Holy Spirit, believing that the rest of this week would be the best this week. Keep your people safe, healthy, and strong in this season. And it's your name we pray and all God's people say, amen, amen. Love you so much.